an interesting result. And we'll look a, a, about this in more and more detail later. Uh, the way this is generally thought about from optical people is in terms of a phase front. And a phase front is shown by these dashed lines right here. And essentially the definition of a phase front is the phase front is the plane that's perpendicular to the ray. Um, so you draw a line normal to the ray and the curve that traces out the line normal to the rays at every point is known as the phase front. And in an ideal lens, the phase fronts are perfectly spherical. However, in an aberrated system, one that does not obey the praxial approximation, the rays bend more than the ideal shape. So if this is your ideal curvature here, your spherical shape, in an aberrated system, it's going to be more of an elliptical phase front that will have a stronger bend. And we quantify the amount of of deviation, the amount of aberration, by a term delta d. And delta d is just the difference between the ideal path and the actual path. So this shaded region in here corresponds to the value of delta d. So you can see it's close to zero near the optical axis. Delta d gets very large as you move out, move out further away from the optical axis. Again, this is shown perhaps a little bit better in this, this image here, where the black dashed line is the ideal phase front and the red dashed line is the aberrated phase front that you're actually going to get. Now, one would think that we could go ahead and instead of deriving it using the praxial approximation, we could just keep the sign terms in there. But you don't come up with an analytic solution for the lens maker's equation by doing this. You can bust your head against and spend a lot of time doing math and trigonometry and algebra, but you'll find there is not an analytic solution. However, there is an analytic solution if you use a third order approximation as shown right here. Remember that, that the sign can be given as, sine of theta can be given as theta minus theta cubed over 3 factorial plus theta to the fifth over 5 factorial plus blah, 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 blah. The praxial approximation is just where we assume sine of theta is equal to theta, but if we include a better approximation that sine of theta is equal to theta minus theta cubed over 3 factorial, we can do the algebra. We're not going to do it here because it's extraordinarily tedious and would take hours. But in this case, we can solve for our term delta d, which is the variation between the ideal phase front and the actual phase front of the third order approximation. And that gives us a solution down here, which you see has five separate polynomial terms. And we're going to take a look at this very carefully in the next couple of days. But as we end here, I do just want to give you sort of a view of what these five terms correspond to. Um, the sum of terms of these five terms is the difference between the ideal behavior and an actual aberrated system. Again, we're solving for delta D right here. And we, the five terms are known as spherical aberration, coma, astigmatism, field curvature, and distortion. And we'll, again, look at a physical picture of those in the next lecture. But let's go through these and, and look at the terms in this big, long equation because you see there are a lot of terms that, that are not really... Uh, straightforward and we haven't explained yet. Each term of this equation has a scaling factor of this form right here out in front of it. You can see for spherical aberration this term is 0, C for 0. And the size of this scaling factor, the actual numerical number, depends on the specifics of the lens. This number is different if you use a different glass, if you grind your lens with a different curvature and so on and so forth. Um, and so these are numbers that it's beyond the scope of the class to determine, but it's a number that says how big each of these different types of aberrations is uh, for a particular lens. You also see in here that almost all of these have a r in it, r to some power, r to the fourth, r to the third, r to the second. And r is just how far out from the center of the lens right here the rays hit. Let's go and look at that. So right here is our value r. If the rays come and hit out here, uh, the aberration for the rays that hit at this point is going to be proportional to some power of r. Um, you see that a lot of these terms also have other uh, factors in them, which is h sub i in this equation. Um, this h sub i is the height of the image. And remember, the, the height of the image is simply the magnification times the height of the object. So it's this actual distance right here. Um, and so some have h i, some have h i squared. Here's one that actually depends on h i cubed. The final thing you see in this equation for the difference between a perfect system and aberrated system is a term cosine of theta. And theta is defined to be the angle here between 
the point, the ray strikes the lens, and the plane containing the object point, image point, and ob optical axis. And that's this plane shown as the gray line right here. So here we have the object point, the optic axis, and the image point, and they're all contained in this plane. And you'll notice that what the theta term means is that rays behave differently depending on where they strike the lens and the angle theta here. And we'll see how that can distort images the next time. So this is a brief introduction to aberrations, which we've expanded by taking a third order approximation into a five term equation that has power laws consisting of a, a scaling factor depending on the lens, r to some power, hi, the image height to some power, and cosine of the angle theta to some power.